Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today we're gonna to be talking about selective color. Do you really think that I would show you how to do this technique? Well, I am gonna show you how to do this technique, but I'm also gonna show you ways that you can use color selectively for a more impactful image without being this literal. So what is selective color? Well, selective color is one of these like faux pas in the industry now. A lot of people uh, shy away from it and uh, beginners will do it a lot. I did it a lot. Heck, I had portraits of my family where all of our eyes were selectively colored and the rest of it was in black and white. And it's one of those things that when you, when you do it, you're like, oh wow, look at that. I can make this color pop out and everything else be in black and white. And everything just seems so beautiful about it. But the reality is professional photographers, and I say professional lightly, they look at that as a kitsch type of thing, like a, a 1970s type of effect or uh, just something that, that that's kind of elementary, okay? When you realize you can do it, it doesn't mean that you should do it. So this selective color look, basically you take an image like this and you turn it to black and white and you leave one color and you let it just pop. And supposedly it makes a better statement than if it was just a color image. Well, the problem with it is, is it's just so literal. Looking at this image, I took this photograph in 2010 in the Marid Henlids in California. I loved this red heart, this red bleeding heart on this black door. Now, I don't like the fact that they put graffiti on the Marid Headlands in these old forts and bunkers, but when I look at the photograph, it had a lot of power and had a lot of impact. So back then, I mean, 2010, that wasn't too long. It was only seven years ago. I was still beginning with this whole post-processing stuff, so this is what I did with it. I turned it black and white, and I made that red heart just bleed all over the place. The problem is our attention is already going to that red heart, regardless of whether we make it black and white or not, right? So here's what I wanna give you as an alternative to selective color. I'm gonna show you the selective color method. Basically what you wanna do here is you wanna make sure that your brushes are set to the default black and white. So I'm gonna press D for default. If you press X, that'll switch between the two of them. What I'm gonna do is make sure that black is on top and white is on the bottom, and I'm gonna go into the gradient map. That, that will give me an automatic black and white image. If I select the mask, which is right here on that gradient map, I can go up to select and go to color range. And in this color range, I can take a sampling of any color in this image. So I'm gonna take a sample of this color, which is that red color. And I'm gonna bring it up way up, like all the way up. It's basically saying select all of the reds in this image. You see how these little pits and pockets of red are being selected in other places too. So I'll go ahead and press okay. What that's gonna do is because I selected that, that's gonna make everything else in that black and white effect be blacked out and only have the area that's white have the black and white effect applied to it. So what I need to do is click on that and press Command or Control I to invert it. And now I've got that red bleeding heart effect all over my image. If I press Alt or Option on it, you can see that there's still some areas here where I would probably want to paint in with the color white on that mask. So I'm gonna get my brush and just paint with white to get those red areas off. That would be the technique that I would use if I was trying to make this extremely literal selective color image. But this is what I wanna tell you, is that you don't always have to go to this extreme with it, okay? So this is the black and white with the red. But what happens if we just introduce maybe half of that? So if we go here and we press 50% on the opacity, you're gonna see that we still have some color coming through. So we still have some of the green from the wall and a little bit of the blue that I really don't like on this door anyway, but that's coming through because it's only at 50%. So it's not as, now we can see it, you know, we see the whole image here with all the colors in it. Now we've accentuated that red and made all the other colors in the image 50% gray. What that does is it allows us to make this kind of color plane and, and uh, manipulate the color in the image to create a sense of depth where the viewer hits that red first and then goes to the other color in the image without just being slammed with that red bleeding heart, okay? But that's just one way to do this selective color kind of concept. So what I'm gonna do is just bring this down a little bit more, maybe bring this down to about you know 25% or so, so you can start to see how the other colors start to come through, but the red is still the most prominent figure in this image, okay? 
There's another thing I want to show you, though. Let's say we don't do this black and white concept. Let's say instead we want to selectively look at colors that we don't want in our image and leave all the other colors the same. Well, there's still a selective color thing that we can do there, but it's more of like a selective saturation effect. So if I go down here and I click the hue saturation adjustment layer, what I can do is I can use this guy right here, which is called the targeted adjustment tool. And I can click anywhere on this image and see what color that is. So that color is coming through as blue. This color is coming through as yellow. This color is coming through as red. So I can click on that color there that's blue. And I can say, you know what? I don't want you to be so blue. You're supposed to be a black door. And now look what happens. So now I'm pushing away certain colors and letting other colors come forward. This is where you get to manipulate the viewer's eyes with color depth, okay? And it's a lot more powerful than just saying black and white the whole image and make one thing in color, okay? So if we click right here, because I'm seeing a color cast come through here, click right here, that is actually going to be our magentas that you can see there. So you click around to see what color that is. You might accidentally grab the red. Just click on the outside of that. You get the magenta and drop that down a little bit. So we can also change the brightness of that to make it darker or lighter while we're in there. The same thing is true here. We can go right here into the reds and we can maybe even bump up those reds and make them a little bit darker. While at the same time, clicking over here at the yellows, maybe increasing the saturation in the yellows. So now we've got that selective color type of look but we're using selective saturation, which is a lot more powerful than just black and white, give me a color, okay? So think about these things. I'm gonna show you another example of how this can be effective. Now these images are not the greatest images in the world. They aren't the world's best photographs ever, ever seen, but they're good demonstration photographs for these examples. Here's an example of someone taking a literal black and white selective color of this image because they really wanna focus on this buoy. Well, if we make that gradient map, put that gradient map on top of here, we have our mask selected, and then we go up to select, go to color range, and we select this color, and we bump up so we get all that red in there and press OK. Then we can press Alt or Option on that mask to see all the things that we need to paint out with black. So I'm going to use my brush, B for the brush tool, D to default, and X to switch over to black and just start painting out. These are all these hot keys that are really helpful to know. So I'm going through them pretty quickly. So just make sure if you need them, just go ahead and pause or back up or something. They, the hot keys are popping up as we do it, okay? So we'll just paint all that out. And that gives us a good selection for our faux selective color. I'm not gonna do that nasty selective color that, that, you, that we all love here. And again, because it has that selected, meaning the gradient map is only affecting the reds, I need to press Command or Control I. That's gonna give me that selective color look. And now I'm separating that red. I clearly want you to pay attention to this buoy as if it's not already in front of the entire image. Okay, that's the idea. When I see selective color like that, I'm like, oh, great. You really wanted me to focus on that red buoy because you made everything black and white. That typically means to me that the photographer didn't really get a good enough shot of what it is they want you to see, so they're forcing you to see it, okay? It's not a great technique to use all the time, but if you come in here and you reduce the opacity here, now you're letting some of those other colors come in at about that 50% mark with the reds being the thing that you have to focus on and all the other colors just being pushed back a little bit. It's much more effective than just slamming this up to 100% and making that all gray in the background. So before you go to that point of, I'm gonna make a selective color image like this, think about these things because a professional photographer is gonna look at that or a trained eye or an artist is gonna look at that and say, great, you really wanted me to see that buoy, didn't you? Because you made everything else black and white. Well, here's the deal. Just go ahead and taper that down to about 50%. You still get your point across. We still know you want us to see that buoy because it is the most saturated, but now you're creating saturation planes. You're creating color planes. You're creating depth, similar to the way that you would use bokeh to, to really uh, use like F2.8 on someone's face, and they've got this really you know nice bokeh with all the lights kind of blurring in the background. It's the same concept, but you're doing it with color instead of focal planes. So color planes instead of focal planes and now you're telling us what you want us to see. So think about these things before you go to that black and white with selective color. Incorporate a little bit of the colors there so you get some color depth in the image where things are still interesting in the background and those colors are still rather nice, but you're giving us a good focal point to rest on. It's just an alternative to that horrible black and white with the red in your face type look.
So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a comment, share it, tell a friend, and subscribe if you haven't already because I do tutorials like this every Friday. I'm really glad that you took the time to watch this tutorial and better your knowledge of photo post processing. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.